This is the colorectal cancer data set by country. So recall again that we have the total colorectal cancer rate uh, per country, and then we also have the total um, consumption by different types of food characteristics, total fat, vegetable fat, animal fat, milk, fruit, vegetables, meat, fish, cereal, and an olive oil consumption variable. To demonstrate the concept of going from simple linear regression to multiple regression, let's first start with an analyze and fit model. This is, of course, after you've done the summary statistics for your data, where you've investigated the data to make sure that you aren't missing anything, that there are no outliers or errors, um, errors you can fix, outliers you'll have to figure out or contact a statistician to get some help with. But in this case, let's start very basically with the CRC as our Y, and we're in fit model here in jump. And we're going to start with fish, so the amount of fish consumption. So remember here our null hypothesis would be that the amount of fish consumed per capita is not related to col colorectal cancer rates in that country overall. The alternative hypothesis is that fish is related. And so remember, the very first thing we do is look at our global F-test here, our ANOVA test. And we have a large p-value here. It's bigger than 0.05. And so our interpretation here would be that fish is not related by itself to the prediction of the CRC rates. Okay, so we're done, right? Well, no, we have a lot of other variables. So let's now go ahead and do a fit model with our CRC rate as our outcome. And we're going to look at meat consumption. So again, still a simple linear regression. We're going to look at meat consumption. We can assess the linearity here. It looks like a line is a good way to fit this data. It's going to do a good job with some countries and a poor job with others, but overall a line seems like a good idea here. Remember, our first question is, is meat useful? Our ANOVA tells us that is yes. So the next step will be to take a look at the parameter estimates or the effect tests. So you can see those here at the bottom. And meat is in fact useful. And our parameter estimate tells us that for every one unit increase in meat consumption, our colorectal cancer rates go up by 0.23. And you can see this again over here as well in our meat uh, predicted plots. So we have this answer. We say yes, meat. But meat is only accounting for 53% of the variance in our colorectal cancer rates. So that means there's 47% of the variance that is unaccounted for. So what about the rest of these variables? Couldn't I possibly consider other variables? Well, yes, you can. So let's go back to fit model. CRC is our outcome. We're going to put meat in and we're going to put fish in. Now you might say to yourself, but fish wasn't related. Well, fish was not statistically significantly related. It only accounted for a very small percentage of the variance in the colorectal cancer rates. Meat accounts for a lot of it, but there's still some left over. So maybe when we consider meat, if we also consider fish, fish will eat up enough of what's left over in CRC to be useful. So now we're going to have meat and fish and looking at that to predict colorectal cancer rates. And press run. Again, our very first question here. Does linearity look appropriate? Yes. Looks like a line will fit this relatively well. Secondly, is my global F test significant? That answer is yes. So, Meat and fish together do a better job of predicting colorectal cancer rates than just the mean CRC, which is represented by this blue line here. That's the mean CRC value. So we're going to reject the null hypothesis and conclude that at least meat or fish is useful in predicting CRC. And now we'll go here and look at our effect tests. And it turns out meat is significant, which we knew, and now, in the presence of meat, fish is also a significant predictor of CRC. You can see that the value for meat from the prior model didn't change much. For every one unit increase in meat per capita, meat consumption per capita, CRC rates go up by 0.24. But now we can see that 
fish is also statistically significant. We can also see that our adjusted R squared has gone from 53% to nearly 60%. And so this is why multiple regression or adjusted regression models are important or are critical in increasing your precision of predicted outcomes. Because while fish by itself didn't do any better job than the mean of CRC alone, when meat is in the model and it predicts 53% of the variance in CRC, what's left over, that 47% of variance, is actually predicted significantly by fish consumption. So you can, of course, continue to add variables to your model here. Uh, in Jump, there's actually a pretty easy way to do that under this effect summary, so I can now add variables. Let's go ahead and look at vegetable fat. Trying to keep things separate. Oh, vegetable fat's not useful. So I could remove vegetable fat. Let's think about looking at, instead of vegetable fat, what about vegetable consumption as a whole? Add that. Oh, yes. So while vegetable fat, which makes sense because there's not a lot of fat in vegetables, isn't predictive, vegetables is. And look here. Our overall model is significant. Linearity still seems to be appropriate. Meat significant. Fish is significant. Fish prediction has changed a little bit. And now we have vegetables. And vegetables have a negative parameter estimate. That means that as you increase vegetable consumption, that's associated with a decrease in CRC level by about 0.07 for every unit increase in vegetable. So it is very important. And look here, our adjusted R squared is now nearly 70%. This is modeling, playing around with different types of variables. We've been looking at all continuous predictors and a continuous outcome. Let's go ahead and add in a categorical predictor, and this is olive oil consumption. If we hop back to the data here, we can see that I have created a variable. If olive oil is zero, then we have a low olive oil consumption in that country, and not enough that had registered per capita, and high, or places say that practice the Mediterranean diet. You might not be surprised to see that Italy has high olive oil consumption, that Greece has the highest amount, followed by Spain, uh, a little bit in Germany, some in France, and Sweden, and Portugal. So we've created an indicator of zero or lower high. So if I'm adding that, again, I want to go back through the process. My overall model is significant. When I've added olive oil consumption, we see two things that happen. Fish is now no or vegetables are, is now no longer significant, but olive oil is really not statistically significant, and our adjusted R squared has gone down. So adding olive oil consumption measured as low or high hasn't improved our model. Very quickly, when you have a categorical predictor in a model, what you would report instead of the slope is actually the mean CRC rate for low olive oil consumption versus high olive oil consumption. So there's no slope associated with this. You want to report means similar to what you would do for a t-test or an ANOVA. Since these are not, this is not significant, I'm going to go ahead and click on olive oil and I'm going to remove it and revert back to our vegetable, meat, and fish model. And this is where the art of statistics comes in a little bit. And this is why you really need to contact a statistician when you get to the stage of needing to model. Because statisticians will be able to assess all of these plots, will be able to follow the model building process, like stepwise regression, and will be able to come up with what's called a parsimonious model for you. That is a model that uses the least amount of predictors for the best level of prediction.